Now, if you have an underexposed dark photo that you need to brighten, there's a bunch of different ways in Photoshop that you can do just that. But it's not as simple as just increasing the exposure slider and calling it a day. Instead, you can get a much better result using some different techniques that I'm gonna share in this video. Let's start things off with my most favorite way of brightening photos in Photoshop, and that's with Camera Raw. So once you have your photo opened in Photoshop, you'll have your layer right here. It's not gonna really matter whether it's locked or unlocked, but I'm just gonna unlock it just so that we can access it really easily and you don't have any issues. From there, we wanna go and access our Camera Raw filter, and we can do that by going up to Filter, and then camera raw filter while our image layer is selected. So clicking on that, this is gonna open camera raw for us with our selected image layer. And camera raw is basically like a mini Lightroom inside of Photoshop. As you can see here, we have all of our basic exposure adjustments. We have our tone curve. We have a bunch of other color options and things like that. But in terms of brightening your image, we wanna start here in the basics panel. Now with brightening your photos, you might be tempted just to go and drag up the exposure slider like this and then call it a day. But the problem with the exposure slider is that if you just use that as your primary way of brightening a dark photo, you're gonna end up with blown out highlights even though the dark areas have become brighter. So for example, in this image here, you can see that the sky is completely white. We're losing details in the tree here and our photo just looks too bright. Even if we bring down the exposure, then we start to have issues where our highlights are almost too bright, but then our shadows are just too dark. So that is where the highlights, shadows, whites, and black sliders come into play. So what I like to do with brightening a photo is start with the exposure slider in a very small amount. The idea here is to just bring it up so that you have a good base level before doing your specific exposure range adjustments. So starting with the exposure slider, I'm gonna just click and drag that up a slight bit just to bring up the overall level of the photo because previously it was super dark, but now we just have a bit of a better baseline to work with. That way all of our next adjustments are gonna work a lot better. The next step we'll go to is adjust our shadows and our black sliders. That's gonna target the darkest exposures in your photo and brighten them up by dragging the sliders to the right. So starting with the shadows, I'm gonna drag the slider to the right and notice how all of those dark areas start to become a little bit brighter. And then I'll go to the blacks and I'll drag that up as well. Now, one thing to remember here is that if you just went 100% on both, you kind of get this very flat washed out look. So that's why I like to avoid going to plus 100 with the shadows and the blacks just so that you don't get this washed out look. Try to just keep it back a little bit so that you still have a little bit of contrast in there while still being able to brighten up your image a little bit. From there, we can go and adjust your highlights and whites as needed. In this case, I might just increase my highlights and my whites just a little bit, just to add some nice contrast in the image there. Now at this point, our photo has become a lot brighter. Looking at our before and after, we've come a long ways just using a few slaughters, but using our tone curve, scrolling down to the curve option here, we can get even more value for our brightening adjustments here in Camera Raw. So once again, we have some similar sliders here to work with. I'm gonna start with the shadows and I'm gonna drag that up just a little to further brighten my shadows and I'll go to the darks and further brighten my darks. These sliders will just give you like a little bit more range than what you had with the basic sliders because when you put them both together, you just have like extra adjustments for these shadows, making it a lot easier to brighten stuff. Now, as for the highlights and the lights, you can adjust those if you wish. I'm just gonna maybe brighten those and darken down the highlights a little bit. And that looks pretty good to me there. Now at this point, our photo is definitely brighter, but we're facing an issue of it just looks flat and washed out. And that's because there's not enough contrast in the photo. And this is very common when you're lifting the shadows because you're literally removing contrast. So to fix this, I like to go back to the basic panel, go to my contrast slider, and then just drag this up a little bit like so. That's gonna add back some contrast in there, make my photo look a little bit more lifelike once again, but still retain all of that brighter shadow information so that we basically just have a nice bright image once again. If you notice that anything needs some further adjustment, you can always go back to any of your sliders and adjust them as needed. It's super easy. So now looking at that before and after, you can see the huge difference that we've made to brighten our photo. We've now brought out all of the details and this is by far my favorite way to brighten images in Photoshop. But if you don't wanna use Camera Raw and you would like to just stay within the main Photoshop workspace using layers and things like that, then let's get into our additional two options. Options. Now really quickly, if you enjoyed that camera raw technique, make sure to hit that like button down below as it really helps to support this video, help more people see it and really supports this channel. Thank you so much in advance and let's get back into it. The second option you have is an adjustment called shadows and highlights. So with your image layer selected, first press command or control J to duplicate that layer. So then that way we're gonna edit non-destructively. I'm gonna just call this layer to edit. 
Now with my edit layer selected, I'm gonna go to image, adjustments, and then down here to shadows, highlights. In this option here, we basically have a bunch of similar sliders to what we have in Camera Raw, except there is a little bit of variation to it. As you can see, we have the shadows, the highlights, and then some adjustments with the color and the mid-tone options. So let's start with the shadows. The shadow percentage is gonna change how bright your shadows look in your image. But as you see, when I bring up my amount to a really high number, it kind of looks weird around my image. And this is all due to your radius right here. So if you increase your radius, it's gonna help to blend those adjustments in a little bit more as you increase the radius. So that is just something to be aware of. This works the same way for both the shadows and the highlights. Now, as for the tone, this helps you to control how bright or dark that particular area is. So what I like to do is just bring down my amount slider until I'm happy with the shadow brightness. And then I can go and work with my tone slider here just to blend everything in a little bit better. Working through those sliders just to find a nice balance that I'm happy with. So that looks pretty good to me right there. Next, I'll go to my highlights and I'm just gonna quickly do some touching up here. This slider is gonna darken your highlights. So if you already have dark highlights, you won't really need to play around with this but I'm just gonna do some quick adjustments here for the sake of example. So now that I'm happy with that, one issue that this tool does have is that it often desaturates your colors because it's just lifting so much of the exposure and it kind of just flattens things out a lot. So with this color slider, you can just increase this color amount and it just adds back some nice saturation in there and it makes your photo look lifelike once again. It doesn't look gray and dull anymore. And then as for the mid-tones, this will control the mid-tone exposure ranges so you can add back or remove a little bit of contrast depending on what you're into. So I might just increase the mid-tones just a touch to add back some contrast. And now I'm really happy with that result, clicking OK. Now turning my edit layer on and off to reveal my before image, you can see the huge difference that that has just made just by using one adjustment layer and one layer in Photoshop. This way you don't have to go into camera raw, you can do everything just with a single layer. Now for the third option, I'm just gonna delete this example layer here and we're gonna start fresh once again. This time we're gonna create a curves adjustment layer and this is technique number three. So clicking on the curves adjustment layer here, that's gonna create a new curves adjustment layer for you above your image layer. Now what I would suggest doing is creating a clipping mask so then it only affects your image layer. You can do that by pressing this little icon right here an arrow will appear on your layer, meaning that this curves adjustment will only affect the image layer below it, in this case, my photo. Now, if you're familiar with the tone curve in Lightroom, this operates exactly the same. Starting on this end of our curve, we have our darkest exposures, while over here on the higher end of our curve, we have our brightest exposures. So for example, if I click on my shadows base point and I drag that up, Notice how my shadows become more and more bright until they're fully white. If I go to my highlights, if I drag this down, those highlight areas are gonna become more and more dark until they're fully black. So this gives you a general idea of the range that this tone curve has. Now for brightening your image, you want to start things off by brightening up your shadows, which in this case is this lower region of your curve. So clicking on your curve like so to add an anchor point, you can now click and drag this up to brighten your exposure like so. And notice how it nicely lifts those shadows for us. But the problem that you see here is that it's blown out our highlights. Well, luckily we can just add some more anchor points and refine this curve so this doesn't happen. Clicking in my midtones here and I'll click there and drag down just to darken out my midtones and bring down my highlights. And then I'll click on my highlights, add another anchor point, and just adjust those as necessary as well. So something like that looks good to me. Maybe I'll increase the mid-tone to touch. And then you can just play around with this until you're happy with the result that you're getting. Just by adding different anchor points in the different exposure ranges, it's really easy just to quickly brighten up any dark areas in your image, especially when you just add a single anchor point in the shadows range of your curves adjustment layer. So now with just three little anchor points and some fine tuning, turning that curves adjustment layer on and off, look at the big difference that has made. You can do further adjustments and add more anchor points if you're having a hard time to darken or brighten a specific exposure range, but the tone curve offers a ton of value. So those are three different ways that you can brighten your photos in Photoshop really easily. Now my favorite way by far is the camera raw method simply because it has so many sliders and it feels a lot like Lightroom with just a nice intuitive drag and you're done 
type of situation. You don't have to deal with layers and things like that. However, I can understand if you just want to stay with your layers and you don't want to go into a separate little thing in Photoshop. So then you have the other options such as the shadows and highlights or the curve adjustment layer, for example. No matter which of these methods you use, you are guaranteed to have much brighter and better exposed photos. And now you don't have to worry about any of the dark images that you've taken. If this video helps you brighten your photos, make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a huge difference to support this video and this channel. And I appreciate you so much. Anyways, my name is Brennan from BeWellCreative.com and I will catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then. Thank you.